Hello everyone, how are you doing? All my followers. Um, yes, this is another edition or uh, volume of my pre prediction videos, of course, boxing predictions. Yes, well, this weekend we have a few really good fights or matchups to look forward to. So let's start without further ado. Um, yeah, I think first, um, first things first, there is an interesting comeback by Peter Quillen, aka Chocolate, Chocolate Kid. And uh, yeah, Peter Quillen, as you may remember, was knocked out in one round by Danny Jacobs. That was a big, quite a big shock. I mean, uh, nobody quite expected him to get blown out like that, right? So, even though that was not, not no shame really, because Danny has since shown himself to be one of the best middleweights on the planet. But anyway, uh, as I said, Quillen is uh, 35 years old now and uh, he's got 34 victories, one loss of course and one draw and with 23 KOs and this is a super midway fight so since that loss to Jacobs he took a year off and then he came back well almost two years actually of he beat one weak fighter, by a, but he hasn't scored a knock, knockout, really. And then he decisioned Jay Lee and Love last year, in August. And now he's fighting Caleb Truex, which is a step up, because uh, <laughs> now he's had to go, you know, back to where he started almost, or... You know, he's been set back definitely, both by that knockout loss and by not being active for two years almost, so... He's fighting a guy that is rather tricky, you know, Caleb Trux, even though he's got his share of losses. They are of same age and almost same height, but... Uh, Quillen has one, one inch height advantage, and... Uh, He's got, uh, but Truex has a three and a half inch reach advantage, actually. So Tru Truex has been been active all this time, while uh, Quillen has been away. But he also suffered a big uh, defeat to Anthony Durrell, uh, or is it Durrell? <laughs> In one round, also he was stopped, and uh, but he also managed to get a victory over James the Gale not so long ago. So and uh, you know this guy is a dark horse, Truex, and uh, he's a guy that can box. Uh, he's rather cagey, but he also can can punch also to an extent. So this will be a, an interesting fight because it will show, you know, just how much Quillen has left in him and uh, I don't really favor to Peter Quillen to tell you the truth. I, I think I, I favor Caleb Truex to win, but it will be a close fight. I, I expect it to be or competitive anyway. But uh, Truex perhaps maybe slightly, I mean, not a better boxer, but uh, certainly he can surprise you, and anyway, that's for sure. And as I said, since uh, he's less ring rusty than Quillen, that, he, that will work or can work to his advantage, anyway. Yeah, so. Uh, Quillen has always had, you know, these defensive issues, I guess, and uh, yeah, 
So I kind of expect Truax to win this on points, and, and uh, but it can go either way, of course. So, uh, but anyway, that is my my prediction that Truax takes uh, victory by decision, either unanimous or majority or split, whatever. And then there is another good fight. This is a middleweight, and uh, between Sergey Derevyanchenko and Jack Kulkai. Yes, this is I think the first fight for Kulkai in America, and uh, Derevyanchenko is based in Brooklyn, so he's actually fighting at home. And uh, yeah. You know, even though Kuka hasn't been stopped yet, I think that Derevyanchenko can be the first guy to do it. Because, uh, I mean, those of you who saw his fight against Danny Jacobs, you, you saw that he really is a rather dangerous opponent for anyone, really. And uh, he, I guess, tends to tends to perhaps open a little bit slow uh, he's not a fast opener i'd say he's a slow starter but he comes he grows stronger as the fight goes on and yeah he's got one stoppage in the 12th round you know and uh that was not against a, a, that a really bad opponent either Turiano johnson but he's also got a few early stoppages. So um, while Jack Kulka, you know, he's a he's a decent boxer, no doubt, in his own uh, right. But uh, you know, he's been a super welterweight for a long time. So he, here he's fighting a guy that is bigger, naturally bigger, stronger. I'd say a better fighter all, all in all. So, uh, and of course, he's lost to Dimitrius Andre and Maciej Solecki before. And of course, Derevyanchenko is no worse than either of the, these two, I'd say. So, I think he will stop Kulkai late, you know, because he, he really came on strong late against uh, Jacobs and yeah but Jacobs is a big big middleweight so he, he was able to you know absorb the punishment and you know just come back and you know but Kulka is not he's rather small for a middleweight so he will I think he will get stopped in the 11th round that's my prediction and then uh, moving on there is uh, of course the fight between Muguya Jaime Muguya and Dennis Hogan yes the WBO super welterweight champion Munguya is fighting against uh, the Australian Dennis Hogan. He's Hogan is uh, actually born in Ireland, but lives in Queensland, Australia. So he's the shorter guy by uh, four inches. But he's a technician, obviously, since uh, I see he's only got seven knockouts of twenty-eight wins. So. He's lost once so far, that was to Jack Kulka actually, on points, while he was the interim WBA Super Welterweight Champion. So, he's defeated a few guys who are decent, I guess. Jimmy Curran, Kelly, Kenny Avrilia. But of course, Muguya is the big favorite to win this fight, and uh, I don't know really. Uh, this may also be a stoppage victory for Muguya because um, 
I don't know really. <laughs> he just looks too strong, you know. I mean, he hasn't. Uh, his last fight went the distance against Takeshi Inoue, but uh, Takeshi Inoue is a different kind of fighter, you know, and uh, perhaps a little bit stronger than Hogan. Perhaps not, but anyway. Uh, this may also go the distance very well because uh, Hogan is a boxer and uh, he will he may give some problems to Nguya and uh, but he is not fighting at home so you know you know actually I saw <laughs> the other night there was a live uh, sending live chat with Kelly Pavlik and. Uh, his buddy James Dominguez, hello guys, and uh, his trainer Hogan's trainer. He was a uh, he he uh, he came in, you know, to he sent some messages and he sounded very confident. I mean, but of course, all trainers are they have to be. He said that you know we are gonna get Muguya and all that. <laughs> But uh, I think chances are small actually that Hogan can win this. So, my prediction is that Muguya wins by uh, TKO somewhere in between round 6 and 10. Yes, that's the one. And then the, the main fight, Vasily Lomachenko is having his first fight this year against Anthony Crawler. Yeah, million dollar. <laughs> yeah, the last fight, you know, Lomachenko got a little bit too much perhaps criticism because he didn't stop this guy, Jose Pedraza. But uh, Pedraza is a good fighter, you know, he's a world class. So why is that a shame? Why is that a sign of weakness I, I don't get it really so now he's fighting a guy that he is expected to stop I guess Krola and uh, Krola has been uh, has he been stopped so far let's see yes he has actually and uh, by by oh yeah that's right but that was a, a questionable stoppage to Derry Matthews. I saw that fight and I thought that was an early stoppage. But that, that was before he really developed, you know, as a fighter, a boxer. <clears throat> One thing I can say is that Lomachenko is a... Uh, if he doesn't stop crawling, then, you know, all the sports writers will start, you know, criticizing him and saying that he stands no chance against guys like Tank, you know, Davis and Mikey or C. eventually, eventually, but uh, Croa is actually a tough guy and a good, good boxer, good boxing skills, but I still believe that uh, Loma, it will be too much for him that he will make him quit most likely like he has done to most others so far so i have actually put down an eight round tko with victory for lomachenko loma yeah so yeah that was all for this time actually <laughs> i'm glad that i managed to get this under the 15 minute mark See you around. Bye-bye.